Hello everyone, this is Mr. Lawback. I hope you're having a great day. In this video, we're going to go over the age of industrialization, which coincides with the beginning part of a push period six curriculum. The topics we will go over will be the second industrial revolution in the US, the inventions and innovations of the era. There were many inventions and technological innovations during this era that were very important. The golden age of railroads, was also known as the railroad era, and also the impacts of railroads, including the problems that were created by railroads. So here we go. Between 1865 and 1900, the United States was experiencing another industrial revolution. This became known as the second industrial revolution. By 1900, America became the leading industrial power in the world. By 1913, the United States produced one third of the world's industrial output more than Great Britain, France, and Germany combined. The United States was also blessed with many natural resource deposits like coal, iron ore, petroleum, and timber. This certainly helped the nation's industrial growth. The rapid economic transformation of America had a lot of societal impacts. The nation changed not only economically, but socially and politically as well. As we discussed earlier, the technology and agriculture meant that fewer people had to farm and manufacturing became the primary source of economic growth in the United States during the later half of the 19th century. The rise of big business encouraged massive migration from the South to the Northern cities and the urban population grew dramatically. Many in the South, especially blacks were leaving to escape the lack of economic opportunity because of pretty much no manufacturing. Also, international immigration to the United States was growing during the second half of the 19th century. So immigration from different parts of Europe and Asia certainly allowed for population growth to provide workers and consumers for this industrial growth. Now, obviously, a big driving force in the Second Industrial Revolution was the inventions and innovations of the period. A large number of new inventions developed during this time. The U.S. government was issuing many patents, and patents were the government protecting intellectual property on something like an invention or a piece of machinery or a piece of technology. Some examples of these inventors was Alexander Graham Bell, who, of course, invented the telephone. And then Thomas Edison, who was also known as the Wizard of Menlo Park in New Jersey, for his many inventions, Edison ended up having a record 1,000 patents issued in his name. And his invention factory, which he referred to it as, became the prototype for many future research labs. So Thomas Edison, certainly one of the inventors we want to be familiar with. The typewriter, cash registers, and adding machines aided merchants by accelerating business transactions. Elevators and structural steel enabled architects to design the first skyscrapers, safely piling so many stories of buildings on top of each other and quickly being able to be transported from one floor to the next instead of having to walk the stairs. Refrigerators and washing machines helped families by easing the burden of time-consuming chores, freeing up their time for other things. These inventions and innovations changed daily lives, creating new jobs and had societal consequences, including more women entering the workforce and many other impacts beyond that for women and for people in general. Now, the first big business in this era was railroads, this period oftentimes known as the golden era of railroads or the railroad age. As we discussed earlier, loan and land subsidies were given by the federal government to railroad companies. And as you can imagine, this led to a lot of corruption, which we'll talk about in a little bit. During this time, the government practiced laissez-faire in regards to the economy, meaning very few restrictions and regulations. Businesses were basically free to operate any way they chose to maximize profit. This, of course, led to many problems. So when we think of laissez-faire, we should think of hands off the economy in regards to the government, pure capitalism or a free market economy. New business practices were introduced as well. Modern stockholder corporations were established. New business management strategies, financing, and regulations were all part of the many new business practices that were developed during this time. Among railroad companies, consolidation and standardization began to grow, and individual railroad companies became more and more powerful. 
So prior to this period, railroads, the, the actual railroad gauges were actually different sizes. So during the latter half of the 19th century, rails became uniform throughout the United States, making rail travel even more efficient and more widespread. Now, what were the impact of railroads during period six? So now it was very reasonable to order parts or goods from other parts of the country and those goods being able to reach their destination a lot quicker thanks to railroads. As railroads and telegraph lines spread across the continent, they increased the pace of commerce and ushered in a new era of instantaneous communication. During this time period, also, the first transatlantic telegraph line was placed so that now North America and Europe could communicate pretty much instantaneously instead of waiting weeks and weeks for news to travel overseas. Railroads allowed for mass distribution of raw materials and manufactured goods, which of course would help the economy grow. Because of railroads, the steel, coal, and petroleum industries also grew exponentially. Railroads encouraged mass production and mass consumption and economic specialization. Now certain regions of the country started to specialize in certain areas. The U.S. was also divided into four time zones to help better coordinate the travel of people and goods. So this first became a corporate law and eventually was something that was approved by the federal government. Now, the problems created by railroads, some of these we have already addressed a little bit, but all of the good things, keep in mind, there were a lot of negative things as well. First and foremost was corruption. The boom of the railroad industry led to incredible government corruption. Great example of this under President Ulysses S. Grant, the Credit Mobilier scandal was a great example of the government and corporations working together to improve profits, but in a corrupt manner. Railroad tycoons became extremely powerful and had incredible influence on the government. Great example of a railroad tycoon was Cornelius Vanderbilt. Now, for better or for worse, they ended up being able to wield a lot of political power. And sometimes this was good, and oftentimes, though, it was bad. The process of land speculation led to unfair trade practices. The small farmer, and we're definitely going to talk more about this, but the small farmers were often charged higher rates to ship their goods by the railroad companies. Larger, more industrial farm companies, they would get the lower rate. They would work with the railroad companies to squeeze out the smaller farmers. 